Oh my gosh, it is a 2021 rookie draft special. What's up? Woo! What's up? I'm a, excited. You need We're to ready bring to talk. that throw down all Oh yeah. To a lower level, my dude. <laughs> <It's just laughs> hey too guys. Much. I'm excited to be here talking <laughs> throw down. Yes. Guys, it's a 2021 draft special. Come on, man. Oh yeah, I mean it is. We are we are days away from the start of another season of Schmodown. It's the happiest time of the year. Uh, free agency has begun. We're getting ready for the draft, mm -hmm. so it is the most exciting time of the year. This is Christmas for every Schmodown fan, and uh, mm -hmm. you know it's another uh, another time to talk to some more rookies. Let some people know the new class of Schmodown competitors. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, the thing is, when it comes to the upcoming season, the war, uh, the war season of Schmodown, they're going to be doing a lot of new things and not a lot of new rules, a lot of new competitors. And so uh, we're going to be introducing some newer people that are added to that were added to the draft list and potential rookies. And so we're going to dedicate some time for both of them. So, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'm Alex Mack, part of the collection crew, and I'm here with, you know, me. <laughs> This pot pile of wonderful strawberry flavored marshmallow man, Mr. Billy Belford. I'm a two time uh, Schmodown award winning journalist. <laughs> That's what I am now. I'm a journalist. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Officially a journalist. All right. A Schmodown <laughs> journalist. Award winning journalist. That's me. Award winning journalist. Okay. You know what? We're spending too much time talking about us. Let's bring on our first, uh, our first uh, person that is on the draft. Uh, that is on the draft list. He is a potential rookie. His name is Eric Davis, and he is, you know, definitely no big deal. He was put on the list by Mr. Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis, but more importantly, he is the managing editor of Fandango. So. It's might be fair to say that he might know he his might stuff. Know some movies. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, Fandango. I mean, do they know movies? Maybe, maybe not. Let's go ahead and bring him up and see what this man has. If I can. Oh, there. There Hi, Eric. he is. Hello, sir. <laughs> How's it going? What's going on? How you doing? We're doing Thanks great. How are you tonight? I'm doing good. I'm doing yeah. good. I'm happy awesome. to be here. We're Thank happy you to so much for coming on. We yes. Really appreciate it. Now I know, like we kind of, we were kind of before we went live, we were chatting a little bit mm -hmm. about how you came to the draft list and how this is. Uh, I, I don't want to say you kind of had some connections going into it, obviously, but you kind of came. You're going getting into this draft list, kind of knowing what you're doing a little bit. Ain't too shabby, right? Yeah, you know, I I've. Um... I've been doing this for a while. It's it's weird to hear my name associated with the name of, of a rookie because I, I feel like I've been in this business uh, for a long time, uh, covering the movie business, covering mm -hmm. Hollywood. I feel like I've, I've kind of done this sort of parallel path. I've known Christian and, and Mark for a very long time. Uh, they've covered the business in different ways. I've been on mm -hmm. a lot of the different shows that they've had over the years um, in, in, where, in different places. And so... Um, you know, I feel like this was the, the, the Schmodown I hadn't, I hadn't done yet. I haven't participated in that yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a, a deep wealth of knowledge. I've been working, uh, I've been doing work for Fandango now for over 12 years. Uh, it is my wow. job to see movies, uh, and cover movies and tell people about movies. Uh, and so I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to be a competitor, uh, on the Schmodown. I'm hoping that, Somebody picks me to be to 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 go in, and uh, we'll see. We'll take it from there. Well, I have to say, Fandango, um, my inner fangirl is really freaking mm -hmm. out right now because one of my fav the one of my favorite commercials of all time is actually from Fandango. Oh yeah. <laughs> it is. It's a, it's a, I know that's like a random thing, but it's the with the paper bag. The bag puppets, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the bag puppets. And, and they're like, the videos of my husband. She's my queen. I use Fandango. <laughs> my husband yeah. is the golden poem. I'll get the popcorn. <laughs> you really do like that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I love that commercial. 
you know, you don't you don't know how how much we you know a lot of us at Fandango are fans of the bag puppets. You know, we kind of grew up yeah. with the bag puppets, and so you you don't know how many times we we bring the bag puppets up <laughs> in meetings. Uh, I think there's a lot of us that would like to see the bag puppets uh, come back. But yeah, it's I think a lot of people what they associate that uh, mm -hmm. the you know Fandango with bag puppets. Uh, they buy movie tickets at Fandango. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've also expanded throughout the years, uh, the movie clips, YouTube network, uh, one of the largest movie, uh, related YouTube networks mm -hmm. is, is, uh, part of our family as is Rotten Tomatoes, uh, as is vo Voodoo where you rent movies at home. So, so yeah, on any given day, uh, I'm working on movies that are in theaters on, on movies that are coming home, uh, and, and all kinds of content that we put out on, on YouTube and, and on other social platforms. So it's been fun. So yeah, what I'm hearing about that because you are the managing editor. So is there like mm -hmm. a disconnect between like, you have to manage people who are writing about movies and doing all these different mm -hmm. things. Do you have time to enjoy movies still? Like, as Oh yeah. Movie? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, I, 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 part of my job, I like to, I, I like to try to see movies, especially the big ones uh, as soon as I possibly can. And, and to, this way I'm ready and to let people know about, about them as soon as we're allowed to talk about them. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is, is, a, is a part of my job I take very seriously. I, I cover a lot of film festivals. Uh, there's about to be a, a virtual Sundance film festival in a couple of weeks that I'm going to be attending and, and watching movies and, uh, and, you know, watching five, five, six movies a day. And so, you know, I, I love, I love watching movies and, and I, I will con continue to do it as long as I can do it and get paid to do it. Um, but, but yeah, you know that, but that's one part of my job. My other part of my job is, is just kind of, like you said, uh, managing the content that we create and that we run and where it goes and, and what the voice is and what's the format and, you know, it's different on Twitter than it is on Instagram, than it is on Facebook, than it is on YouTube. And so, you know, there's so many different variables now uh, when it comes to, to covering movies than there were, um, you know, 12 years, 15 years ago when I started doing it for the first time. Right. Absolutely. You, I mean, it sounds like overall you've been not only working within this industry for obviously an extended period of time, but it also sounds like your core knowledge is vast. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty vast. Yeah, yeah. so definitely no big deal. <laughs> it's something that kind of naturally accumulates, you know, working in the industry, obviously. You just can't help it. Um, have How do you think that's going to translate work, studying movies in much more of an analytical way, you know, versus writing, writing for uh, editing and writing for films that uh, on that kind of approach where you're kind of d deciding whether or not something is good or where it should be a release, that kind of thing, to trying to just trying to watch a movie and take notes or yeah. kind of analyze it in that kind of way instead as a potential competitor. Yeah. You know, I, part of my job is to kind of soak up a movie. you right. You know, so I, I watch a movie and I kind of know, uh, a, you know, who's in it and, and what it's yeah. about, you know, but part of what I do is, is soak it all up. And, and this way, when I talk to people about it, um, I can talk all, I can talk about it in a bunch of different ways. And so uh, I think that knowledge helps in, in something like Schmodown, sort of those little pieces of trivia that are mm -hmm. kind of in the nooks and crannies of a movie. Um, a lot of those are just embedded in me because mm -hmm. I, I have to soak up so much of a movie from really from the beginning, the moment that, that people are cast, you know, cause we're covering uh, from, from the moment it's announced to who, who, who is in it. Uh, and when it comes to like some of these universes, like your Star Wars and Marvel and DC, like you have to know every, every cockamamie, this, that, and sideways about <laughs> who, who's connected to who. And, you know, and I, you got to soak all of that up because, mm -hmm. you know, you got to talk about it. And not only do you have to talk about it, but I have to, sometimes I have to go on like national TV and talk to people that don't know, haven't seen all 25 Marvel movies. You know, they don't know. They're like, is it good? Should I go see it? You know, and so I have to distill right. it down for them. And then I got I go on shows like this where we get into real the, the nitty gritty of it. Yeah. Uh, and I got to know that too. So yeah, that's a long winded yeah. way of saying I have to soak it all up. And that's why I'm a good competitor. <laughs> what he's trying to get at everyone in the chat. Also, we had a little bit of flurry of people like popping into the chat. So thank you so much for dropping by and hanging out with us. Um, but it sounds like, like, like it kind of mentioned, it sounds like it's, 
your knowledge is something you're constantly working on. Some mm -hmm. you're constantly working on expanding overall. Um, now I know you're looking to potentially be directed into singles in particular. Yeah. Um, so in singles, so, so you know that means you know being with a lot of these competitors that such as Jeff Snyder. I know. As I know Mark Snyder. Draco. Yeah. Snyder, Snyder, Snyder thinks he's a, Snyder thinks he's a badass, but he's like he's oh, from yes. he's from Boston, right in the Massachusetts area. <laughs> yes. So that's why I always have that against him because he's like a Red Sox <laughs> fan, and you know I'm a New Yorker, so so that he that's just like one strike that he's just always gonna have against him that he's just from that area of the country uh, that um, is unseedy. You know Some what? Being ways. from St. Louis with the Cardinals, how dare you, sir? That's okay though. Cardinals are okay. I'm a car. I'm. I, I'm. A, I can root for my Cardinals. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, uh, I root for the Chiefs. I root for the Chiefs. Uh, but that whole Boston area, I mean, not so much. No, that's never gonna be it. <laughs> Red Sox. That was his, that's, that was his team name in the Schmodown. Schneider's team name when he first came into the teams, they were the Patriots because it was oh, him and the <laughs> God, that tells you everything you need to know about about where he's at. But well, yeah, but keep of, but keep going. Pass, pass Jeff Snyder. <laughs> well, you're kind of new to the world of Schmodown yes. a little bit when it comes. Yeah. And so, uh, I I'm not. I don't want to quiz you on Schmodown history or the different faction storylines or any of that stuff. But you know, I'm kind of curious about you know being being a potential, you know, Schmodown competitor and mm -hmm. being in some of these matches. Are there any particular potential? Um, you know, competitors you would love to go up against in a in a sounds in like a Schneider. Perfect world. <laughs> oh God! Like, I like mean, Schneider? yeah, may, maybe you know. Um, I, I'm friends with uh, Perry Nemiroff. Who, oh yeah, um, oh, yeah. the yeah, world just with Perry Nemiroff. <laughs> we we just did it. We just debated on a Rotten Tomatoes show. Rotten Tomatoes does like a, a debate show, a binge mm -hmm. battle um, on, and we do or on Facebook, and we were doing it. Uh, and uh, we, Perry and I went against each other in the horror. It was like a horror category. It was a special mm -hmm. Halloween episode. And I was like so nervous because Perry is like, knows her horror stuff, like forget about oh. it. And it was director versus director. Uh, I had Cra Wes Craven and she had John Carpenter. Uh, and, we, and we debated and I, and I won the debate. So um, I feel Good like... I feel like uh, I'd like to go against uh, against Perry. I have a lot of respect for her. She's got a, a deep knowledge. That'd be mm -hmm. that'd be great. There's a that lot of so there are a lot time. of there's a lot of uh, writers and people who've written, whether they're critics or or yeah. whatever uh, journalists in the Schmodown. So there's there is like a, a pedigree of that. So I mean, like, do you feel any pressure as the managing editor of Fandango? To come into the showdown, yes, and be able to answer trivia for sure. questions for sure. Because I, you know, I'm I'm the first one to say that. Like, I have a, a wealth of knowledge, but you know, in my, you know, you have to also be fast to the to it, you know. And yeah. some, you know, sometimes yeah. I have a wealth, I have a wealth of knowledge, and you could throw out a trivia question to me, and it's there. I it just it's going to take me a few minutes, and you, sometimes you don't have that kind of time. So, so that's probably would be my greatest weakness is just being quick to the draw. And I think so much of it is your knowledge, but so much of it is being quick, quick to the draw. How fast can you can you come come out with it? Um, and so that's something that I'm I'm going to have to work on. Um, you know, assuming that that I go forward and, and compete. Mm -hmm. Well, with that being said, like you said, should you like move on and compete? Um, you know, there's aspects of, you know, when it comes to training and competing that are going to be not obviously not only very new for you, but something you are, like you said, you're actually going to be working on the idea yeah. of strategizing and be able to pull an answer from thin air and have mm -hmm. like some, and let's face it, we all kind of want that moment, that Stacey Howard moment where even if you don't know it, you know it, where you're able to pull that answer out of thin air. <laughs> it's for magic sure. when that happens. Um, are you excited to watch movies you've never seen before? Are you excited to kind of expand your movie horizons? Yeah. By really kind of going into, like, if you're going to go up against Snyder or Perry, for example, and you find out, like, a, a huge weakness of hers is costume dramas or, for example, um, 1970s or something. You're kind of, are you going to be looking to, you know, take on that uh, to really some bench some of those movies? Yeah, for sure. 
definitely. Uh, I think that I definitely have holes in my knowledge, uh, without a doubt, e even though I spend, you know, 95% of my time embedded in, in movies and movie culture, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're always going to have, have, uh, you know, empty spots. And so, yeah, definitely. I'm going to, I'll strategize and, and I'll, I'll look for weaknesses and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll study up on, on some, some stuff that I feel like I'm maybe a little bit weaker in, uh, and, and we'll have a go at it and we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you never know. One of, uh, motor, motor dice. one of the Schmodown's inner geekdom, uh, best inner geekdom players named Kevin Smets, um, he famously said that the worst part about being an IG player is that he had to watch Green Lantern five times. Are there some <laughs> horrible movies that you're like, oh man, I'm gonna have to go rewatch this terrible piece of crap? So oh, like, God. how do you feel the schmodown now? <laughs> uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, it depends. It depends. I mean, I think uh, Green having to watch Green Lantern five times, I would, I would feel bad. Some of those earlier DC movies, yeah, you know, were having I, some issues. Yeah, I would, I would feel bad about that. Yeah. Look, um, yeah. well, we're player, not an interdictum player, so you, you don't have to watch it five times. Maybe just one. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> clip it's note. Definitely plus. Definitely. Go on plus. movie clips on on YouTube and just get the movie clips from it. Now you'll be good. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, and real quickly, uh, one of our patrons, Weston Iro, he even mentioned Perry. Obviously, it's Eric's face on a dartboard now. Definitely, <laughs> I'm sure. Right next to the cat uh, that she has, Dewey. I'm sure. Dewey. Yeah. <laughs> I love Dewey. She's gonna be like Dewey throwing throwing darts at my face, mm -hmm. but yeah. The it's smile all good, is that Perry number off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know we only got a few more minutes with you. Yeah. So thank you so much again, so much for your time. Um, real quickly before you go, um, are mm -hmm. you also familiar with the world of wrestling or anything all that much? Are you familiar a, a with that? Bit. The, the, uh, like the character plot storyline premise that uh, Harloff and Ellis really try to weave into Shmoda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I know that they, they weave the storylines in and there's characters and stuff. I'm going to be mm -hmm. playing as myself, uh, so you're not going to get me as some character unless my New York accent sounds like a character, which it does to a lot of people. <laughs> um, oh and so gosh, I'll be I'll be bringing that and I'm just going to kind of be bringing myself and my knowledge and we'll see how far it gets mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a New Yorker, so you're associated with smack talking. So I'm sure that'll for sure that'll come natural to you. For sure, <laughs> every time you bring up Jeff Snyder, you'll hear me you'll hear me <laughs> smack talking a little bit. Please, and when you, okay, if if that match were to come up, I demand bring in some puppets. Bring in some puppets. Answer with the puppets. Yes. Oh, Please, that's his that, character, the that, Frank that, puppets. <laughs> oh my gosh, how much money would I increase my patronage to for that to happen? <laughs> yeah, Tarlock, if you're watching, I will you do it. I will go all her so tickets from now on. <laughs> it's so much more. I just need it back. I love it. Again, Eric, thank you so much for having uh coming in on the uh, on call to action. We are super yeah. appreciative. I know you have a this is like very valuable time of yours. We are very grateful. Now, real quickly, where mm -hmm. can managers or whatever may reach out to you for questions and all that good stuff to chat? Yeah, I usually send people to Twitter, you know, at Eric Davis. Mm -hmm. uh, you have it running on, on the bottom of the screen here. Uh, that's all, that's me on Twitter. And just come. That's mm -hmm. where I, I do most of my hanging out and talking about movies is over there. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can, you know, my DMs are always open. Uh, I leave them open to, to anybody. So uh, you can come come chat with me and I'm super accessible um, and I'm around. So come find me there and we'll talk. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Again, thank you so much, Eric. And I'm sure we'll see you go against Snyder or Perry in the very next. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they will. Yeah. <laughs> thank oh, you yeah. so much. Thank you. Take All care, right. guys. Have a good one. Thank you. you too. Bye. Wow! Oh, right, pulling out the, oh. the reigning Schmodown Player of the Year. I love it. I love it. That's you know what? I I respect it. I'm right. like, you know what? That, the, the guy clearly is balls, and I appreciate that. You know, he's like, I know Schneider. I know him. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. Oh, fantastic! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we Ooh. are. That's not all, the only rookie that we are bringing on tonight. We're also oh, going to bring on another rookie. That's uh, you know. Ain't too shabby, if I do say so myself. Um, she's yeah. definitely new to 
no down but belford can you can you like, yes introduce our next person? tonight we have with us the 2016 circle drawing champion jess schloth yes Woo! slow slow just 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 slow. okay i'm gonna put her up because i thought someone there else you go. There <laughs> it is. Hey. Yeah, that, hi jess how's it going i'm doing good how are you guys we're doing great, I'm just we're doing great. giving my uh, giving myself a self five because i got your name correct right right <laughs> yes. first try yeah. <laughs> Yes, how to suck at certain point of view. <laughs> yeah, okay, go first. Let's get a five in here. Let's get a five. No? Yeah. There we go. Yes. <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> yeah, all right. Thank you for coming on tonight. We know your time is very valuable, obviously, as a grad student. So, one, congratulations on finishing school in 2020. Like, Thank I don't you. know. How yeah, you crazy times. Like, how are you My doing? Your graduation was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, just walk across your living room or something or, uh... yeah no i literally it was like a video on my tv and i was like by myself watching it oh. um, saw my name oh. up for a second like they didn't even read it out loud but oh. in the past so that's all right your name's gonna be announced on the schmodown and that's way more important than any yes. college graduation or you know what? <laughs> it doesn't even matter People graduate yeah. college all the time. <laughs> well, again, Jess, thank you so much for coming on today. I know you are you are when you're put into the draft list. I know you are, as far as I know, you're not someone from the fan leagues or anything like that. You are just a fan, and you submitted an audition and yep. killed, it, right? <laughs> I guess so. I was consider like I saw the post about. Mm -hmm. like the opportunity to audition. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then I didn't really think about it. And then I got a DM from um, Abby Friel who like asked me if I was going to. And I was like, I thought about it, but I wasn't sure. And she's like, well, I think it would be really cool if I saw like more girls like my age in the league. And I was like, you're right. So I did my best. I pulled something together. I submitted it and here I am. So wow. love it. Yes. Yeah. You were you well, the I'm, Florida State sign girl at the yes, Orlando <laughs> event? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. We know who you are. Yes. <laughs> Stop and bragging, Come on. What? Stop I'm, bragging. Name I'm just saying, I've been to a lot of live <laughs> events. I meet people. They're there. No, it's no, fine. You know, like cash, no Orlando, deal. Atlanta. You know, <laughs> every New York event. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Jess, uh, you've been to a few uh, events down there in the South, over to Orlando as well as Atlanta, right? That is correct, yes. If it's driving okay. distance, then I then I went for me. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I want to know, out of the two, which one was your favorite and why? Um, Probably the Atlanta event because mm -hmm. I went with um, my two best friends and they like got into it. I went to Orlando with my family, like my sisters and my mom and like, they were being supportive. They're like, this is something you love. So like, we'll go with you. So you're not by yourself. They were just like taking it all in. But I feel like I kind of almost converted my friends to like actually watching it. Like, mm -hmm. and they were really like excited about it, cheering and stuff. And I got better seats, which I think helps. For Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, improves the experience if you're in the VIP or the or the uh, preferred seating or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, and the match was amazing. So, no there, big there deal. Is, there is a history in the Schmodown of people who, you know, started out as fans who just went to live events and then became Schmodown competitors. People like Jimmy Janine the Bean, uh, Janine the Machine, uh, <laughs> Brand, the Machine. greatest man alive, Brandon Hanna. Um, so like, you know, there is, so are you excited to, you know, be the next fan to, to competitor? Yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, I think fans do have an advantage in that they're very familiar with how it works, like all the rules and like right. the, some strategies people might do. Like you, you, like you watch it. So you soak it all in eventually. Like, you know, uh, like in round two, you have multiple choice, like 
Some people yes. don't know that if they don't watch. Um, <laughs> like, read the rules, but I'm not going to listen. <laughs> Yeah, well, but this year there are new rules, so it's going to be there are going to be some true. things that are going to be new to everybody. So, are you are you preparing for that? I'm excited to see them, and I'm very much a rule follower. So I'm very much like, <laughs> give me the rules, and let's I will. Like that, let's make that happen. Uh, oh, you know, let's make that happen. You know, come schmo down. Let's make that your nickname, Jess, the rule follower Schloth. <laughs> Very intimidating. Wait, well, I yeah, because otherwise you're definitely going to get just the slot sloth. Because so we need to pick a, a, new, a nickname now, or you're just going to be the sloth. Like we got to get a nickname. Do you see the? In um, do you see the sloth? Yes. Oh, I'm going to so carry it around like like the barbarian carries around. Uh, yeah, well, I can't steal his shtick, so. Oh, true. <laughs> You could, however, improve the shtick, though. If you don't mind. I'm saying. Um, <laughs> speaking of a lot of these rules, like that you said that you expect to follow, are you know you've been a fan of Schmodown for several years now, I believe. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Um, and obviously, in the past few years, Schmodown has changed like night and day. It's bonkers. Uh, what would you say is or some of your favorite changes that Schmodown has made in recent years since becoming an uh, since becoming a Schmodown fan? Like, would it be like some of the addition of some of these new rules? Would it be like um, the the speed round and uh, in in a championship match, or it could be anything of above. Well, I, th I don't know if this counts as like rules technically, but I think the most exciting change was with like having factions and the draft and all that, like the structure mm -hmm. of it all. I feel like it's a lot more entertaining to follow, mm -hmm. like to have like a team to root for as well as, um, you know, uh, <laughs> just like singular people and where it was kind of like up in the air of, yeah. right. you know. Especially because there there used to be like a few factions, like there was the Lions Den, and then mm -hmm. uh, Emma had her what was the Fife Club. Fife Club. Uh, there was like, also Jay Washington. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then there was like there were a few other ones too. Like I think the Wangers had some faction, like the New Breeders. I don't remember what it was called, but nothing like you know. This is how many people are on your team. This is yes. they're you're working together towards you know the factions were just mm -hmm. going. For belts which is might as well be the singles players going mm -hmm. for belts now there's almost like the belts have almost taken a little bit of a back seat to like you're gonna you're trying to win as a team you know mm -hmm. and that everyone gets a manager like some people didn't get managers yeah. like you had to right yeah. so i just like yeah. appreciate the structure absolutely i totally agree i am i'm kind of I have a very similar mindset as you jess where i I, I don't like doing something without a purpose. I like following rules. That's just who I am. And if it doesn't like serve a purpose, I'm like, just get out of here. I don't want it. Like get out. Like why do it at all? But that's just me. And you know, when it, especially when it comes to a lot of these, when it comes to like having a faction, when it comes to faction management and everything, looking back, it surprises me that this didn't start and didn't happen sooner. You know, because it seems like a no-brainer now looking back, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe there was some, like, friction over the angle of wanting to be more sports-oriented or being more theatrical and how that could, mm -hmm. like, balance together. So maybe that's why, but I mm -hmm. appreciate the decision, I think. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the okay. best... I think oh, sorry, one of the best ahead. aspects of it is that in the past you would have matches, especially towards like the end of the season. And it would just be like two random people. And you're like, Oh, that's cool. These two people are in a Shimoda match, but who really cares who wins or loses. Now it's like every match counts every match. Mm -hmm. You know, you could be a rookie and it, you could have one match this season. And if you win that match, that could be the difference between your team, your team winning or not winning. So, I mean, it's like, it definitely adds more pressure, but it also adds more like, entertainment around every single match which is really cool yeah it feels more important for the smaller people yes 
There are no small people in the Schmodown. Everyone's, everyone's a big deal. I'm just a small person height wise. That's it. Oh, okay. Fair, fair. We we we, we love small people. Danny Joy's <laughs> really tiny. Uh, Kelsey's a tiny, tiny little person. You fit Paul Denuzio's a little pocket person. You'll fit right. You're 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 in good company. I've never felt tall all that much growing up until I went to a live event and saw my C2A family, and then I realized <laughs> I was tall. <laughs> Because uh, I'm like five, five, seven and a half, but growing mm. up, it like no one ever called me tall. And then I went there and I was like, oh, <laughs> I'm massive. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> pretty tall. <laughs> um, I know. Okay, so you want to play in singles. Is that something you're excited to play, right? Potentially, yes. if drafted, right? Okay. For sure. What, what are from the singles tournament this past season? What was one of your favorite matches that you saw as a fan and like freaked out over? Um, freaked out over. Like, for example, I remember like sitting in silence for like five minutes, to be completely honest, when Adam Collins beat Roca. I was like, I mean, his run was pretty admirable. Like, <laughs> yeah, I we, we was not expecting that to happen. Now. Yeah. So just yeah, like was, any like, of them, I guess. <laughs> True. It was, they were all like pretty fantastic matches. Belford, do you have did do you, you have, have a match favorite now? match ever the Schmodown? Is there like a, a match that you like oh, love the most or like the match that, that made it click for you? Like, oh my gosh, I love this. Um probably um Andrew Guys versus Dan Merle when he beat him because like who was expecting that? <laughs> Yes, like, no. oh, this is the best answer guys, for this podcast. We're, we're making you part of the Action Army. It's official. Oh, no. She already is in, in Atlanta. We, we indoct we, you weren't there. We indoctrinated her in Atlanta. She's Action Army. You oh. already made her Action Army. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't in Atlanta for the induction. All the best ceremony. people were there. The Molly <laughs> Damon was doing the chop. You know, it was a, it was a husband, great time. Was there. We were my my husband Ooh. was there and my dad. Okay, I'm so sorry. I we love it. Up. Whatever, whatever. Um, okay, oh. so that was one of your favorite matches. Um, I completely agree. I remember like almost crying when I saw that live. I was like, <gasps> um, what about, okay, what are, some, what are some of your favorite Schmodown personalities? Not so much like a, like the competitor aspect. I just want to know about the personality, the, the storyline aspect for you. What are some of your favorites? Okay. Um. Well, like, I was really, it, it's kind of sad that it didn't really, like, come to be, like, as much as, like, a force as um, I was hoping. But, like, with, like, Five Horsemen, how that came to be, like, mm -hmm. I wish that was more of a thing. Because, um, yeah. like, Dan is one of my favorites, but, like, who, he isn't one of his favorite. Who doesn't mm -hmm. love him, basically, is what I'm saying. <laughs> He's so great. He's like so like genuinely nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost it's on the verge of being suspicious. You feel me? Uh, well, I also have a uh, soft spot because we graduated from the same State. university. Yeah. Stop bragging, Jess. Come on. Are, are you the greatest Florida State graduate in Schmodown history? Is that you? Are you? You can say it. You can say it. I mean, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> So you're you got a degree in psychology, is that right? Is that yes? And it's psychology with education, right? That's what your your grad school is. Yeah, so I'm going for school psychology. School grad. psychology, okay. okay. And is that going to help it. you study in the Schmodown? You think? I think. Well, I did a little research, and I will just give you this little tidbit. Um, okay. So, have you heard of working memory? Yes. No. So your working memory is kind of like you're processing like things that are happening in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of comes to play with Schmodown because of having to answer a question, coming up with it in 15 seconds. Right. So your working memory declines as you age. And so <laughs> you being a young person, my youth is a strength. Get and out also, Melbourne. it's worse. For men, so. Ah! Wow! 
You heard it here first, guys. She called out all the old men of the shrimp. No. <laughs> We're clipping oh, it out so just, quick. <laughs> just for my own personal education, what do you consider like older? Like, what's an what age is? Do I need to worry about my work? Right Alfred, now? why are you digging your grave? No, I'm not for deeper. myself. I'm an old man, so I need to know if I need to like. Is there like some food I can eat to help my memory oh. stay? Or oh, you're not gonna like get dementia. I just mean like. Well, I mean, Ben Goddard is kind of confirming, you know, your theory <laughs> that no memory death doesn't work. You know, yeah. See, I, I could never be a Schmodown competitor because my memory works about two days later when I'm in the middle of doing something completely unrelated to what I'm trying to remember. And I just <laughs> shout out what I was suddenly remember. So apparently that doesn't work mm -hmm. in the Schmodown. You got to like do it in 15 seconds. But uh, yeah. yeah. Or if you're like just in the shower and then you'll be like, oh, she said that in that argument. That was my comeback. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. It's yes. Daily. All right, so obviously being in school, you're no stranger to studying. You're at grad school. You're studying a very difficult cat like subject overall. So are you intimidated by the prospect at all of potentially uh, taking on another uh, thing to study? So like actively study and work on and improve on as well while going to grad school? That's a great question. I, um, so I am the type of person that kind of gets like obsessed with things. Um, like I go through phases of being like really into things and this Schwodown phase has been pretty long now for a couple of years. So now that like, I'm like, I'm gonna study and I'm gonna, watch all these movies. And so my schoolwork is what I'm worried about. Taking on the studying is not what I'm worried about. <laughs> what time yeah, management we're gonna work your, on that. Your priorities are on point and I respect that. <laughs> I really, really do. And guys, I see a handful of questions over in the chat. Um, so I, we're definitely gonna get over to those here in a split second, but I just wanna bring it up. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything you'd like to ask any of us, Jess included, please send it to, let us know in Twitter or Streamlabs, much appreciated. Everything that we receive is, uh, we're trying to definitely work on improving C2A, so every little bit counts. So thank you so much. All right, so um, BCD, just real quickly, uh, oh, sorry, Re just really wants to ask, uh, this is quite accurate for me. Are you trying to call me out? You know? Call. He, it, he's just like saying, <laughs> like, it's like just calling out like men, like men in general, uh, older men in general. So that- I didn't mean to call out all men. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is uh, but I mean, it sounds like like you said you have been in the schmodown phase for a while, like you said. Like so, I mean, how long? Like count? the longest time. So probably since like season five, maybe yeah. Like okay. the newer okay. like format is probably mm -hmm. when I was watching the most religiously. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of stumbled upon the schmodown accidentally once, and then. <laughs> Hey Liz. And then <laughs> oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Um and then I saw a video by his channel's like Alpha Media, but Harrison, I think he used to make those profile videos. Um yes. that were like on the Patreon. And it was like why I love the movie Trivia Schmodown. And I right. watched it and I was like, maybe I should give this another look because like he seems to really like it and it looks mm -hmm really interesting like I kind of so then I went back to it and then I kind of got obsessed and that's how it started mm -hmm. and yeah okay did you always like play along when watching these matches right away or did the idea of like playing along and wanting to actually come in to get into Schmodown kind of come a little bit later yeah it came a little later well at first I would just like fast forward through you know the beginning and just watch the match mm -hmm. and then I would um Sorry. <laughs> and then I would eventually start to watch the whole thing. Yeah. And once I started to realize I was getting answers correctly, I was just like, maybe I should actually put some effort into answering them as they do it. And it's slowly like my improvement has like the more I've been watching, the more I'm getting questions right. So it's kind of one of those mm -hmm. things. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, it takes time. I mean, like no one starts from the get go being the bee's knees, you know, it takes time to develop those skills and get that knowledge for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I got my whiteboard ready to go though. So, you know, <laughs> ready to every time I watch, I'm always. So, it, so if I, um, so if I give you like 10 questions right now, could you answer um, them? I mean, <laughs> I would like to. I really like the way you stretch so many It's fine. I will say. So you weren't in the fan leagues, and you weren't on. Um, you know, so like, there's not a lot of people who know necessarily you as a person or as a competitor. So, um, one of you know our good friend, friend of the show, John Kaiser, he always asks people if they could pick a double feature. Um, you know, what to like to show their friends and family. Like to pick two movies to show that friends and family is like a double feature. What two movies would you pick to like introduce yourself to the Schmodown to show maybe what movies you like or who you are as a person or what you love about the Schmodown? Anything they can be different to tomorrow than they are today, but like what two movies mm -hmm. right now would you pick to introduce yourself? Well, okay, I'm trying to think of two. one sticks out to me. And it's because it's kind of falls into when people ask me what my favorite movies, some of them, this pops up. Uh, School of Rock is one of my favorites. Ooh, and I think it kind of, because do you know the characters, uh, Lawrence and Summer? I'm kind of like a weird yeah. combination of them too. <laughs> like, okay. Or at least when I was a kid, I was maybe. You play the it's piano? So or? <laughs> I do play the piano. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that. Summer loves the rules. You are Lawrence and Summer. <laughs> yeah. It's like the the snarkiness of Miranda Cosgrove and the awkwardness of I don't know who his name. Don't quiz me on that. But um, Give me a short out question. <laughs> like, uh, I, don't, is it, there's, I know there's like Keep a that. Weebly. We Sneebly. He, oh, and his Sneebly. name is Mr. That's, Sneebly. That's, uh, that's Jack Black's yeah. character. Mm -hmm. I, I all, one of the only things I remember about that is well, aside from like I, I love the movie itself, but it's also it's directed by Richard Linklater, who is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, one of the most underrated directors <laughs> out there. <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's heartbreaking how underrated he is to me. Um, yeah, but those are really those are really great picks overall. What's your I'm what was your other movie? Um, I guess my other right now. Maybe it would be like Lady Bird because I connected with that movie a lot and uh, mm -hmm. the whole mother daughter relationship. Um, I also went to private school growing up um, and I love Greta Gerwig, so like all that. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great pick. So it's what that I can't remember her name, but um, the woman. That plays Lady Bird's mom. Mm -hmm. um, as I, I don't know the actress's name, but she actually went to my high school. She went to like my my drama teacher and everything. And every time like mm -hmm. anything related to her comes up, there's like posters of her everywhere in the drama class. I remember that, and it was like a huge deal that she was like on a handful of TV shows and like Big Big Bang Theory and everything. Off topic, but <laughs> um, okay. So Lady Bird and School of Rock. So I'm feeling some of like there's a little bit of coming of age movies, a little bit of music movies, that kind of thing. Um, now, I don't want to ask you about your strengths and weaknesses, um, but would you say like some of these are some of like your some of your favorite movies of all time? Yeah, I would say so for sure. Looks like you have some uh, some fans in the chat. Uh, you know, yeah. there's a uh, some you're somebody's queen. I saw there. Uh... <laughs> Said, uh, Amy Amy Trayer says that uh, yes, oh, Jess. Amy. So uh, yeah, and then Tegan Graff says uh, Jess is a true star. So you know we gotta. Oh, we those are my friends in my. <laughs> they're also going to be fellow school psychologists. So. Fair. <laughs> wow. Um, I know we do have. Um, I do know that we have some patron questions, but I'm not entirely sure yet how to get to them. So um, <laughs> if, 
So I feel bad because I don't know how to how to get them. <laughs> so someone can oh, Jake. Wow. So if you can post them in the private chat or something, I because I don't know how to get to them right now. Um, but it's coming up. I promise they will be asked shortly. So please. Uh, so thank you so much for being patient with us. It wouldn't, our- it wouldn't be called action without some technical difficulties or some you know. I- <laughs> we don't know how to do something. Hey, comfortable atmosphere. Scratch that. Scratch that. You know, I got some questions. I got some questions. I found it. I found it. Thank you. So, I, I have a question. Okay. Um, so with the obviously with the pandemic, like they went virtual, and then but eventually the goal obviously is to get back in studio. Would you be willing to go into the studio and be on the schmodown? You looking looking to get into that studio and, and schmodown? Yeah, I mean, because they schedule them all, like, because I could definitely, like, you know, hitch a flight out there once in a while. <laughs> like, I was it. Um, Is that, know, like, the dream? It's a weekend. What was that? Is that, like, the dream for you to play in an in-studio match? That def- I haven't even gotten to watch one yet, so that definitely would be an experience, you know? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that I like that's a dream of mine. Like I know I couldn't compete, but at the same time, oh my gosh, the opera just I just want to be in the studio. Just uh, mm. oh, that's like just breathe in the air, you know. <laughs> Overall. Um we did okay, so uh thank you so much again for your patience. We did get some questions from some patrons. So thank you so much from Western Iro who said if you get snubbed in the draft. Would you consider an offer from a manager to be their assistant manager for the season? Me? Mm-hmm. Someone would want me to assistant manager. I mean, yeah, sure. I'll try my best on what I would offer. <laughs> I definitely, because <laughs> I think something a lot of people are just really like excited to compete and to win and to like, you know, win a bunch of matches. And for me, I kind of want to be drafted just to like, help the faction in general and like be supportive of them and maybe the people who are like trying to score more points you know <laughs> like are getting in those higher level matches to like yeah. be a source of uh like support and a resource for them mm-hmm. so if that's Absolutely. in the form of an assistant manager i guess i would love to <laughs> you can uh, you can yeah. teach them about working memory you can you know give them some techniques oh, yeah. to improve their working memory <laughs> mm-hmm. And I know, like if I was manager, I'd be like, I gotta get Jess to help out my 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 faction, my team. Man, we gotta get up on that. Absolutely. <laughs> we did also get another question from Ben Rainer, who has said on Patreon again. Thank you so much to Ben for being one of our patrons. He said, "What movie made you fell in love and with other? Sorry, with like movies enough to make it your career? Also, what is your favorite movie?" Now, I don't think it's obviously it's not your career. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you kind of mentioned. It's not I your career, obviously. But, um, what, are, what are some of your favorite movies in general, then? I know you mentioned School of Rock, Lady Bird. What are some of your other favorites? Well, something, because I, I did, like, this little, like, Instagram, like, 30-day challenge where it had, like, a prompt, and it, you would, like, share, like, a movie, like, based on what it was. And one of them was, like, movie that changed your life. And mm-hmm. I thought about um, the movie Short Term 12 because it was kind of the first time I came across a movie and I realized like I wasn't just watching like a blockbuster movie and like I connected with it and it was like made me cry. And so I just felt um, like that would really change my perspective on how I look at movies. And so that would be my mm-hmm. answer. It's not my career though, but <laughs> you know what Schmodown could be is like in essence a kind of career, you know. Kind of. Yeah. 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 Um, what okay, this is kind of a weird kind of off-base question. Um, what is like a, one of your favorite movies that really really showcase psychology or psychologists correctly? Um, like for example, like, like I feel like uh like from we have a uh, Dylan Camacho. He's in C two way, and he's not uh he he does not have a PhD in psychiatry or anything like that. But he is a he is some kind of uh, medical professional where he did a lot of counseling and along those lines, and 
and he's kind of mentioned to us a handful of times that these movies showcase psychiatry in a good way. These ones do it incorrectly where it's almost self-harm. These ones do it um, um, and kind of a lot of those things. And so do you have any opinions about film and psychology at all? I guess I kind of have an answer and this isn't exactly your question, but kind of. So in... So I have practicum that I go to every week and it's like I'm shadowing a school psychologist mm -hmm. basically to see like how it'll be on a day to day. Mm -hmm. And my supervisor taught me about like zones of regulation and it kind of just helps um, students like express their feelings and how like because some don't really know like how they're feeling and like how to explain it to an adult. So yeah. I thought of Inside Out because like in their Ooh. office, they have like the different characters and it helps like the kids like kind of express like, oh, I'm feeling angry, like I'm in the red zone um, and that kind of thing. So I guess that sort of answers it, but not exactly, but that's what I thought. Of. No, that 100% answers it. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. Like, it's kind of funny. I've had conversations with people about Pixar films and like I, I've had people argue with me that some Pixar movies are not made for children and I'm like it's 100% made for children however has a lot of adult themes and such as like an adult and a child are going to interpret soul and inside out very very differently so for sure yeah soul is definitely one of those required some deep existential thinking like definitely no big deal <laughs> for sure uh, we did get another cool question from the chat. Uh, Kluner asks, what current player would you want to face first after faces a rookie or two, of course? Um, someone that could be really fun to face might be um, Video Drew. Because okay. I feel like she is such a different personality and I think it would be a good foil to me in a match that might be interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess that would be my answer. But I would be excited to face anyone. <laughs> That's fair. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'm not um, trying to call anyone out specifically. You, you don't want to call out Jeff Snyder? You can call out Jeff Snyder if you want. I mean, someone's yeah, already done it tonight, but, you know, just saying. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for that. <laughs> it, it's very to me but you know what that is probably the most more diplomatic answer you know <laughs> compared to eric who did call out snyder and perry as well for sure but yeah so definitely playing it safe and you know what i respect that jess i do it as the wolf follower for sure um Jake, Jake's right jess definitely needs to take gun down a peg i like that answer well done jake yes yeah I, I would really, really be that, for sure. If my audition tape ever surfaces, uh, that's who I um, chose to mm -hmm. call out yep. in my like, promo that I had to do. Oh, all yeah, right. I'd be into this. I'd be into this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we are going to be wrapping it up here in just a few minutes, guys. So, if any questions or comments, whatever it may be, you know, please let us know when it into Streamlabs, Super Chat, any little bit counts. And yeah, there is just a little bit of a bandit silver war person. Um, real quick, before we kind of look off, um, we haven't really talked all that much about the idea of storylines and characters all that much. Is that something you're excited to be able to participate in at all with the idea of like creating this idea of being a heel or a face or a tweener? Yeah, for sure. I'm very excited. I've always liked them. Like, what would my name be if I ever competed? And I like could never really come up with anything um, that seems creative, but I am excited to have something like that and uh, to be, yeah, involved in that would be very exciting. Um, I don't know, like, I think I would probably be more of a face or tweener because I just want people to like me and I know they take a lot of heat, like being heels. Um, That's fair. I think if you but, were to play a heel, it would be one, like, so that one of the tropes of like wrestling and, and of, uh, of um, 
like these sort of characters is the character who who wants everyone to follow the rules to the point where they're like taking like they're like they're too strict about the rules and like you could lean to that because like, that's what he's doing, like the rules and stuff and like and you could like analyze other people in the match where they like technically didn't follow the rules and be like or like they did something that's not like you know correct in your mind and you would just like call yeah. them out about it so that would be like a heel character you could play yeah mm -hmm. or it can be passive aggressive sometimes maybe i could just really play that up i guess there you go <laughs> oh my gosh as a psychology student yes <laughs> girl you can play that to your advantage so hard please do that please oh my gosh i need this right now please and do it against the bandit Please. Oh gosh. <laughs> uh, we shall see. <laughs> one day, one day. Yeah, it depends uh, on, <laughs> on <laughs> yeah. when I get drafted or if I get drafted, how I will fit, you know, and that's how my character will be formed from there. But yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. The taskmaster, well, we are... Ben Rayner says in the chat. Five dollar super chat from Ben Rayner. <laughs> the taskmaster. What do you think of that <laughs> name, Jess? The taskmaster. What is <laughs> what is uh, Summer's title? Or she's the class uh, in School of Rock. She's like the class. Mm -hmm. Well, she's the manager or whatever. But she's, she's also manager, like yeah. she has the Thanks. like she has a title before that that she's the class. Yeah, class oh, president. Yeah, something. like the note taker. What is yeah, the, the notarian or something like that, or like like that could be yeah. your real name. <laughs> How would you feel about true. that? We get we got to go back and every everyone in the chat, please let us know what the real title is. <laughs> oh. Um. So, so, do you approve of this nickname, the Taskmaster? Well, it seems a little bit more intimidating than real followers. So maybe. <laughs> I don't know. We shall see. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I'd be really here for it. I also would uh, love to see more badass ladies with badass names in general. Not to say if he decided to go with Jess Sloth Schloth, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to it. I would not be opposed to it. It's just a very different vibe. Yes, <laughs> you be so out. You put a you put a sloth on a t-shirt and it sells out. So uh. no, oh my, the marketing would be fantastic. And Jess, you have to demand a percentage of that marketing, of course, because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right there. We have it confirmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always joke. Um, if I was in a fashion <laughs> version, I'd be Candor because they're like the black and white, like, you know, like honesty. <laughs> I, got it. Like that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah. Okay. Schmodown, uh, Schmodown sloth gear. I can see it now. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we are going to be wrapping it up in just a few moments. <laughs> and so last question of the evening, just, I want to know. Well, it's not really a question. It's more like a request specifically. Okay. Can you, in like, 30 seconds. Can you pitch yourself into a Schmodown story? Oh like gosh. create create a storyline. Completely <laughs> hypothetical. You can like put in like most random obscure things and just like put them in there and just like weave your way in. Um oh gosh. I need For example, I need some help. <laughs> Okay, you know what, Belford, Belford, I'm gonna task you. I'm gonna task, no pun intended, but I'm gonna task you with this challenge. Then, create a story, a Schmodown storyline for Jess, the Taskmaster. The Taskmaster. Oh, mm -hmm. let's see here. Well, since she's the Taskmaster, she's a heel character, so um, mm -hmm. she's going to be in a uh, she's gonna be in a feud with Debonair Drew guy. Because he's mm. trying to turn face, which we hate as heels, and she's just going to keep telling him how he's not doing things correctly to be a good, <laughs> a good face character. But in fact, he's, you know, these are all just nitpicking things, and you know, um, and uh, yeah, and just to, you know, to berates him after after his promos and things like that. She just comes in to tell him what he did wrong during his promo. Oh 
you know, it's uh, it's good stuff. And then he also like you know, psychoanalyze him, you know, giving bring in a little bit of that the psychology into it. Um, yeah, I like that. Or she uh, she like she could like pair up with someone and she's going to like teach them how to be better in the schmodown, kind of like Lon did as the professor a few years ago with Ooh, Cody Hall. Yeah. But um, mm -hmm. she's like, and it's going to be her and Ben Bateman. And she's going to bring Bateman back to glory, you know, back to the title with her new techniques as the taskmaster, yes. Jess Schloat. You know, I'm just, just, just spitballing Yo, here, you know. You know what? <laughs> okay, you know, Christian, Mark, whoever is watching this, everyone in between, get Belford on your writing staff, your story staff. Just, this is, this is you know, just, 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 just did you approve? Here. Did, did you approve of these potential storylines? Yeah, they sounded yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of awesome, <laughs> BCD says, Jess is just too cool. Why is she so awesome? So definitely got some fans in the chat. Okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks. Jess, where can we reach you? Where can we see your beautiful face? <laughs> um, I guess... My Twitter handle is floating down there. I don't have any podcasts or YouTube channels or things like that. I'm just a normal person. But if managers need to contact me, that's where they can do that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we, we all start uh, out as normal people, and then we just get weirder and weirder in the schmodown. So, uh, <laughs> that's the truthiest Gen truth you've ever said. Very true. I'm an elder Gen Z. It's gonna be sweeping uh, away some old, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Just get out of here. Like it's you got the do cleaner, Jess Schlutz. You gotta clean up the schmodown of all these old oh. <laughs> old people who can't remember who have no working memory anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the therapist slowly working at taking out all the problems in schmodown. No, that, that's not cute. That's not cute. That's not cute. All right, Belford, where can we see you, your beautiful face and everything? Uh, hey, I've been, uh, at Mr. Billy Belford on Twitter. Um, uh, you see me here on call to action, two time award winning journalist. I'm a journalist now, guys. I'm a journalist. Um, Congrats and, award, and, by the way. Thank, oh, you. thank you so much. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, uh, congratulations on your rookie of the year award. It's going to happen. We know it. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's where you can find me on, on the Twitter and on a uh, call to action. Alex, where can they find you? You can find me at real underscore Alex Mac on Twitter. You can also find me with a few different things. I am actually making schmo baits twice a month instead of every single week. That way we can get consistently like really great fights and all that good stuff. And also I host a show called Cinema Bias with Drew Grant, aka Video Drew, where we dive into our personal movie biases. And tomorrow we're going to dive into the movie Blazing Saddles. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> uh, that, I mean, Blazing Saddles is a great comedy with some problematic issues now. What? <laughs> what? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's yeah. <laughs> wait, who has, wait, in that show, like one of you hasn't um, seen it, right? Yes, I haven't seen it since high school. To be honest, oh, okay. Okay. however, we are making we are making an exception. Um, uh, we are making an exception. Drew has seen it, uh, but she's in a very similar situation than I am. But it was a patron pick, so okay. we're gonna be doing that one. So, guys, thank you so much. Please okay. like and subscribe. I just want to let you guys know we have a Patreon on uh, Call to Action. We were doing a bunch of stuff there. We're doing watch longs, Q and A's, general hangouts. We play games. We do movie challenges. A whole bunch of stuff are also available over there. Like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, right, right above Belford's head. Where uh, you can find us in podcast form everywhere, spot, uh, uh, Spotify and Anchor, all that good stuff. So iTunes, guys, all that stuff. Exactly, exactly. Thank you guys so much. You guys have a great rest of your day. Wear a mask and just keep watching movies and have a great evening. And slow down. Slow down. <laughs>